Hi everybody. Okay, pottery. We're working on quail pots. If you did not do the practice activity before watching this video, you need to stop, go back, and redo, or rather do, the practice activity. So the practice activity for us in here is going to be, and I just, I printed out two sheets and I will attach this to my document that just listed all the different techniques you can use when building a quail pot. If it's easier for you as you build, or practice rather, to print that sheet out and follow along with it, that's fine. Or you can just refer back to my photos I post um, and kind of copy what I've done. So again, that's kind of what's going on here. I have the photos, it's really tough for me to lift it up, but basically we have spirals, arches, you can build vertically with your um, coils horizontally. You can make donuts, folds, twists, braids, spheres. Um, you can do half spheres, which that's really for the instance where you're building with a ball, but it's too thick to fire. You just would cut it in half. So you have the illusion that it's a big ball, but it's, it's not too thick um, so that it's still fireable. And then um, flattened spheres, spheres so that... Um, it just kind of has a different look. All right, what are your requirements for this project? You need to use at least two different types of coils in building this pot um, of the options that you practice. And then the other one is that it just needs to be five inches tall. How tall is five inches? Well, it's about the height of your hand to the tip of your finger, okay? So you, that's about how tall you have to build. When you're starting building these, you have two options for your base because your pot needs to have a bottom. You can either go, and I just rolled out an oval and I don't have a size pref, or rather a shape preference for this project, but I rolled out a slab that is oval. Um, but you could also make your base out of coils. So you can imagine that this probably would need to be wrapped around a time or two more to achieve um, this size, but that's kind of what I was going for as an oval. I prefer to build on um, a slab base. Personally, you can make that choice for yourself. Just keep in mind that anytime you attach two pieces of clay, they need to be slipped and scored, and so that is an important factor. All right, so let's say I'm going to start building my pot. You already have some experience rolling out coils, but let me just give you a few um, helpful hints. So when I'm rolling it out, I always pre-wedge my little blip, um, or bigger chunk of clay so that I can guilt-free pull off of it and just roll coils. Um, besides that, when you do start, I start with smaller pieces. Um, it is a little overwhelming to work with a big giant piece and it ends, ends up being thick, thin, thick, thin, not consistent all the way through. So I take a piece of clay that's been wedged in my hand, a smaller chunk, right? And then I'm just gonna kind of squeeze it out so that it ends up, um, being a little bit longer and skinnier to begin with. Nothing pretty, obviously there's still dense divots marks in it. Then I take it to the table and I start rolling. Now if it's a smaller piece, I'm, I can get one hand on this comfortably and then as it grows, I'll start with two hands. Some of you, it might be easier to start with two hands, so you're gonna start with a slightly longer um, piece of clay, but you'll figure that out as you go. So I'm just gonna roll Please notice I'm rolling all the way through my hands from the tips of my fingers all the way to the heel of my hand way back here. Um, getting that full roll helps keep it round. If you're only rolling in your palm, you're really only rolling it back and forth about half to a quarter of the way. So you end up with flat spots, which I just did by doing that. So I'm gonna kind of pinch that out. Now, if you do end up with flat sides, so you have round on one side, round on the other, flat top, flat bottom, just kind of pinch it to round it back out and keep rolling. A few different reasons that happen. So now I'm on two hands because mine's a little, it's gotten a little longer. First of all, the motion of the actual roll is going to be what, see I got a flat side, it's hard to get rid of. Um, you can hear it kind of clicking. The motion of the roll is what's going to grow your project or your, your coil rather, lengthwise. Not so much the pressure, but your pressure does need to be even, okay? You need nice, even pressure as you're rolling out your clay. And then people always ask to, you know, 
well, I'm ruling out my coils is this good enough. Um, we're still living by the rule of a quarter of an inch. So if your project is thicker than a quarter of an inch, it's not going to be fired. Um, so please also keep that in mind. Now, a few things I do want to show you um, that you might come across. As you build, yes, you do need to slip and score. So each individual little small piece of the techniques that you decide to use, remember you need to use at least two of those methods of building in your pot, at least two. More is always welcome, less is not. Um, as you're building, a few things you might come across. If I'm working circularly and I, I have the ability to roll really long coils, you don't want to um, continuously coil. So I'm gonna show you that here in a second. I took my one coil and I wrapped it around, and again, same, pro same concept as the slab pots, you can build either on top of or next to your base. But if I, if I do that, I kind of am always gonna have an awkward um, top. It's never gonna be completely flat because I will have a starting side, or a starting coil rather. So if you want that to be flat, then it needs to be one built one coil at a time. So rather than continuously wrapping, um, you're gonna build with one coil, cut it, you know, attach them together, and then continue to build, okay? And for the most part, you're gonna be building horizontally to achieve that height, and then whatever you decide to do technique-wise in between is fine. You could also build straight up with those techniques, like you could do twists or braids or, um, Maybe you're just building with arches, but traditionally coil pots are kind of horizontally built with some sort of design in them. The other thing is, let's say you want your pot to have a little bit of shape to it. You don't just want your walls to go straight up and down. You want to add some curves to it. The best way to do that is going to be um, using the rule of half. So when I'm putting my coils, sorry, I'm going to that a little bit better. When I'm building with my coils, and I'm going to have to roll out a couple more here, so as I talk I'll do that. Um, instead of putting one directly centered on top of the other, when you're using the rule of half, um, that's overlapping one coil on top of the other one only by half, either towards the inside if you want your pot to go in, or towards the outside if you want your pot to grow out. So let me just really quick Roll. It's easier for me to roll standing up, so I'm just going to stand up and roll this out quick. And that might be the case for you, too. All right. So we've got some coil here to work with. Nothing, nothing too pretty. Um, but with my pot, I want to have a few examples to show you. With my pot, if I continue to build my walls one you know, on top of the other, I'm going to have a very straight wall. If you want that to curve out at all, or maybe curve in at all, this is the rule of half. When I put this coil on top of this coil, instead of putting it directly on the top, like so, I am going to sneak that towards the outside edge. So basically you're slipping and scoring on half of your coil instead of, you know, the whole flat side, or the whole side, rather. And then I could continue building that way. Keep in mind, you would need to slip and score. Um, but I could continue building that way, but that achieves kind of an outward, see how my pot's kind of growing out, um, appearance. And then on the flip side of that, to go in, then you would just overlap, but instead of building to that outside of that coil, you'd build to the inside. And hopefully that makes sense. So this way, you know, like I said, my pot would grow out if I overlap to the outside and my pot would grow in if I overlap to the inside, or you can just build straight up and down. That's kind of your choice at this point. Five inches. So it's probably going to take you a little while to achieve that. And some of you are going to need some extra practice rolling your coils before you get started. Um, but that's coil pots. A few examples I have here. Most of them haven't been, they're not complete. So this particular person did a triangle pot and then they used vertical and horizontal. 
So this is kind of an exciting pot. So yes, it's it's oval, and the walls are you know straight up and down. There's no curve to it, um, but they incorporated a few different techniques. So not only are these coil shapes, which you're not limited to what I've provided you, you can make other shapes, leaves. Um, well, right now I can't think of anything other than leaves, flowers, yada, yada. But this person incorporated some different shapes and then the flower is just um, slipped in a slab that's been slipped and scored on the top. Then they did little rosettes, so little roses, um, kind of on the in-between. And you know, there's things like that where you might individually ask for a little bit more help. Hey, I wanna make roses, I don't know how. Just come visit with me personally. This particular person did, um, yes, they built horizontally, but then at the top, they built with a series of smaller sections, so they wanted those separations between their coils, and then as well as a twist. So a twist through here, and then smaller sections of coil um, built together on the top. This particular person just used spheres, and so the different sizes of spheres kind of create gaps and openings, and I really like that effect. Um, you can strategically leave holes in your pot. It does not have to be solid. Um, sometimes holes, I think, are nice, Especially if you're thinking of something like a candle holder, then it really does make some nice um, lighted reflections or refractions rather on the wall where the light shines through the holes that you've left strategically in your pot. So those are cool options too. Um, leaving gaps is always acceptable um, unless you intend on this holding water, then it would not be. Something else I like to show, now not everybody likes um, the coil look, especially on the inside of your pot. Now, if your intention is to, you know, put something in these, then cleaning is also a factor. So on the inside of my pot, and I'm gonna have to sneak away here in just a second to grab a tool, but on the inside of my pot, I can always smooth that out. Now, I would like for you to leave the outside because that's kind of, ooh, there's a hair. That's kind of the whole point be behind the um, designing in your coils is so that you can actually see that design when you build these, but, just one second. You can smooth these out on the inside. That would That's where we were at. Um, I like this green modeling tool. This particular one has little teeth here at the top, and I like that because it helps grab some of the clay and push it into the cracks. Um, and I'm gonna move this closer to you here so you can see it. Um, not a lovely angle. Anyways, um, after I've slipped and squared these all together, and I do this like a small section at a time, four or five coils, and then I'll smooth, and then I'll continue to build, and then smooth that out and build like four or five coils at a time. Because if you try um, and wait until the end to smooth this out, it becomes overwhelming. You might also start smoothing it out and decide it's too much work, and you don't, or you don't like the way it looks, um, and then nix that and start again. But the little tooth side, if you kind of scrape it up I didn't slip and score this together for demonstration purposes and time, but if you just kind of scrape up in here, it yucks that surface up a little bit, yes, right? It's kind of yucky, um, but it does fill in the cracks, and then all you have to do is come back with your finger to smooth it out, okay? So that's kind of how you go about smoothing the inside if that's your, if that's your game. Alrighty, so quick recap. We're building coil pots. Yes, you're rolling these coils by hand. Keep in mind, even pressure is important and you wanna roll all the way through your hands. Um, to start out with, you're gonna need to have a base and that base can either be made out of coils or slab, but keep in mind if you're gonna roll a slab, you need a barrier between your table and the clay, whether that's a piece of burlap, come up here to the wedging table, use your plastic bag in a pinch, lots of options, a board from the back part of the room. And then these have to be five inches tall. So five inches, bigger's fine, smaller, not so fine. Keep in mind, I'm not going to get a ruler to do that. Um, not only is five inches about the size of your hand, but it's also one of these kind of green modeling tools. So if you're close in that range, that would be fine. Um, five inches tall, you have to use at least two of the building techniques or coil techniques that we go through as your practice sheet. Um, and then you do have the option to smooth out the inside, but you don't have to do that. And some people like that look, some people don't. Coil pots, that's a wrap. Good luck.